Okay, good afternoon. As you all know, uh, my name is Johnny and I'm the uh, owner of the website stgalinalocal.com where we put up as much factual information as possible and recently the focus has been on the St. Helena Airport and come here coming in and all the test flights but I think we tend to forget what um, we're also delivering from the other side of the world from the UK side. So today um, it so happened that me and Richard were roaming around the same city well, I spoke to Richard to see if we can get a live question and answer a session going for those people who are interested in flying direct to St. Helena from the UK. And as you know, Richard and his team at A-Star has um, looked into this possibility for the last four years plus. And it's going to be a reality because Richard and the team at Atlantic Star is going to take off from Luton directly into uh, St. Helena via Banjul. So I'll just introduce you to Richard Brown, the director of Atlantic Star Airlines. Good afternoon, Richard, and thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for, thanks for tuning in and, um, and joining us on the first, first time I've ever been in a live uh, webcast. So it's all, all a bit exciting and new. We've got uh, a few viewers popping on and off the line. Just to um, verify what you need to do, you just need to hit the play button on the live stream. And if you could leave us a comment, we'd just like to see or just like to make sure that we are actually um, getting the comments to come back in. Anyway, Richard, if you can give us a little bit of an update on where we are at the moment and what Atlantic Star is doing at this point in time. Uh, as you know, all the prices have been released. Everybody's keen to get to St. Helena. It's going to be the ultimate go-to destination in the South Atlantic. Over to you, Richard. Okay. Uh, thanks, Johnny. Uh, so. Uh, the aircraft is booked um, for operating dates in May, in October, and we're just about to finalise some Christmas dates as well. Obviously, at the moment, we're really concentrating on, on getting those May flights away and, uh, and making sure that we've got, uh, we've got good passenger numbers for both those flights. Uh, we've had uh, some good uh, uptake on our Priority Club membership, which is great, and uh, what we hope is that airport certification will happen next week, and that will allow us to go completely on sale with, with tickets both um, via our website uh, at starairlines.com. So, so we'll be able to um, uh, sell tickets directly on galacticstarairlines.com and also uh, via the Solomon's uh, travel offices at the Malabar in Jamestown. So uh, by both those means people will be able to book tickets and also by bringing uh, a travel pack uh, at their London office in the UK uh, they'll also be able to book tickets that way. So, very excited. I'm going to be on the first flight and uh, looking forward to seeing a lot of you uh, who will be joining us, which will be great. Uh, it's going to be quite a historic day. I might even have a couple of beers on the flight and uh, I suspect a few other people might do as well. So, yeah, we're at a really exciting time with the whole project. Uh, excellent. So, what sort of timing uh, are we looking at leaving Luton? I mean, because we're going to have we're going to have to get the St. Helena in a good time for the daytime landing. Uh, just to kind of update, there are people actually sending messages to, uh, to my WhatsApp number. Uh, if you could just hold back on the WhatsApp messages, because every time a WhatsApp message comes in, it's uh, stopping the video streaming. So if you could just kind of hold the messages. I know you're all keen to get uh, questions across to Richard, but if we could do it via the Facebook page, it would have a WhatsApp message just appearing. So yeah, what time do you uh, anticipate taking off from Luton? So it's a, it's a late evening departure out of Luton, and the reason for that is that we need to land in daylight hours into St. Helena. So the most logical way to do that is to have a uh, late evening departure from Luton, arriving into St. Helena about uh, sometime after 10 uh, in the morning. The aircraft then turns around in 60 minutes and flies back to the UK uh, shortly after that uh, for a late evening arrival. It's um, efficient in terms of the way we use the aeroplane, but of course we need to make sure we land in daylight into some of the hence the reason that we're on the planet arrive sort of the middle of the morning, which I think should suit people very well. Oh excellent. And coming back from St. Helena, I mean I know a previous interview with uh, Saint FM, you were kinda getting a feel for numbers. Um, what sort of an uptake have you had on, on the return flight? So we've had um, really good numbers um, for Priority Club on the way out to St. Helena. We've had less numbers on the way back, which um, we anticipate it, to be honest, because we know that a lot of Saints are used to uh, having longer periods in the UK, so maybe for some of them a two-week stay is, is, is perhaps unusually short. 
but bear in mind, often people go away for a month, but we spend you know the best part of two weeks of that actually on the RMS, and often wouldn't spend much longer than two weeks in the UK. So our initial um, proposition was for a two-week stay. That suits a lot of saints in the UK who can only get two weeks leave from their from their employments. So we always knew that the timings were going to be a bit of a compromise, and that's been reflected in the fact that we've had good take up uh, from the UK, but less good from the island. So. Uh, we've got some strategies in place to uh, to deal with that, and when we go on sale next week, once airport certification has happened, then you can expect us to uh, to make some announcements that I think people will find quite exciting with regard to uh, some ticket pricing, um, specifically for people wanting to visit the UK. Oh, excellent! And with regards to passengers that's going down on the um, on the flight, is there anybody that? Uh you know, famous, or is there anybody who you could reveal? I mean, it's entirely up to you, but it'd be uh, interesting to know what sort of a passenger caliper we are taking to St. Helena. Well, you've got me, uh, of course. I'm going to be on the first flight uh, out from the UK. Um, Andy Radford is going to fly out on Comair to, to meet us, and then we'll fly back on, on the first flight. So there'll be a NASAR director on each, each of the first services. Uh, we thought that was important to do. Um, Lord and Lady Jones. Uh, are coming out on the first flight with me. Um, Lord Jones has visited the island a couple of times before and is a, a real advocate for St Helena. Uh, has been within UK Parliament and House of Lords for a number of years, so it's an honour to have him along. Uh, there was talk about him bringing one of his mates, um, a chap called um, Bob Henrik, who used to be a drummer with the Kinks, but unfortunately Bob can't make it, which is a shame. Because he's, um, he's quite a good storyteller. It would be nice to have him along. Uh, we've also got a number of uh, travel journalists who are coming out with us as well, both on our flight out and some who are coming out on the Comair flight, staying a few extra days to spend a little bit more time in St Molina and then uh, travelling back with us. So yeah, we've got, we've got good interest in some interesting people and, and also people that hopefully are going to be good advocates for St Molina going forward. So the opportunity to, uh, to showcase the island to some UK travel journalists, not just uh, remotely, but actually to have them on the island for a number of days is a brilliant opportunity and one that we intend to make the most of. Oh, excellent. So it sounds all uh, very exciting. One of the things I think that's worrying a lot of people, I mean, with the Comia flight going in on the 20th, and uh, I also believe there potentially might be one earlier, but that might just be a rumour. How are you guys doing with regards to passengers who want you to go and stay um, you know, in like rented accommodation. I mean, how, how are we getting on with that? Because originally, when we looked at uh, this whole thing of two aircraft going in, the accommodation um, availability on the island, uh, you know, brings a problem because we're not used to this kind of big influx of uh, people at any one time, especially in, in in the one week period. Well, I think certainly our initial flights are mostly based around saints and their families, so that, that tends to mean that people are just going to be staying with friends and relatives. Um, there is still some accommodation available on the island. Um, we've just been in the process of sorting some out for um, for Lord Jones, in fact. So th there are still some some accommodation spaces available, and I think there are also some private properties that people you know are able to make available. I've certainly just booked one uh, together with um, Jack Thomas. Oh. So um, that it does prove that you know people are thinking about renting their properties out and perhaps making a, a few quid out of the fact that. Um, Property is relatively scarce to rent. I don't see it as a problem on flight one, and certainly by uh, October and Christmas time, again, we'll mostly be, uh, be bringing Saints back and forwards. But I think the accommodation situation will perhaps be less acute, and also the, the whole accommodation market will start to mature a little bit. More people will start to maybe do some holiday rental uh, type stuff using Airbnb. Uh, or other means in order to get their uh, get their property rented. In fact, this guy wants to be able to do that for you. So um, hopefully we're going to work with Johnny such that people can uh, rent their properties out uh, and, and generate some income from tourism, which is, after all, what the whole airport project is about. Excellent. And we've got our first, um, first comment here. Uh, it's from Pam Brown, and we know Pam's in Swindon. Uh, Pam's a big... Okay. Uh, Pam's a big traveller, she normally does all the uh, cruise liners and stuff, so she's, she's going to change her lifestyle and she wants to know, can, we, can you book me on a flight please? So We can do that Pam, um, I, I think you've got my email address, um, so you can get hold of me directly or you can get hold of me via Facebook and um, 
I'm guessing you're probably on our email list. I, I don't have that information to hand, but if you're not, go to the website and um, go on our emailing list and we'll be able to give you all the ticketing information you need uh, for next week and, um, and we'll be able to get you on, hopefully, on, on the first flight. I'd love, to, uh, I'd love to see you on the first flight. <laughs> so there you go, Pam. There's the answer to your question. Um, I'm not sure what you'd like to do, whether you want to go for two weeks, because Pam is one of those people, she's got friends all over the world, and you can guarantee, you know, she comes from St. Helena, she knows everybody, so two weeks probably is not going to be enough for Pam. I mean, I'm sure you're going to look into the option of Pam maybe going on, uh, I'm speaking on behalf of Pam now, but going out on the uh, Atlantic Star and then uh, coming back to the UK via Cumbria. Is that a possibility? Yeah, absolutely. So when we go on sale next week, people will be able to buy single tickets as well as return tickets. Uh, we know that some people want flexibility. We recognise that not everybody wants a two-week stay. So yeah, for sure, you can fly out with us um, from Luton down to the island, stay as, as many weeks as you want, and then come out with Comair. Or you can go out uh, through Johannesburg with Comair, stay as long as you want, um, and then and then fly back with us. Obviously, at other times of the year. So obviously, we're doing. Um, 22nd, 23rd of May and 5th and 6th of June are our operating dates in this season, but obviously we'll be doing four flights um, in the winter season that will allow people to either have a two-week stay, three-week stay, five-week stay, eight-week stay. So um, there'll be a lot more flexibility from us going forward, uh, but we just need to get these May flights away and, um, and get, get ourselves properly launched. And I think once we've got that done, um, then the future is very bright for Atlantic Star. Excellent, and then Pam's just come back and say, great. So right. all of you in St. Helena who's, um, who's uh, viewing this or will view this later, Pam's on her way down, so. Be warned. Be warned, do whatever you need to do for Pam's arrival. Be, be interesting to know where people are listening from, or uh, we have viewers popping up on, the, uh, on our live stream now, so it'd be just interesting to know if there's just UK viewers on here, or you're viewing from Germany, or South Africa, or wherever you are in the world, it'd be just great to know what uh, sort of a range of audience uh, uh, we have. So we've already had some questions uh, come in. We'll probably get started on the questions and then we could uh, also ask questions if any comes up on the, uh, on the comments. So just to recap, to ask a question, you just comment on the, um, on, on, on the comment bar below and we've got someone coming in here. Okay, someone said one way, so that is new. Uh, had, category being denied recently. Uh, I'm not sure about that. Uh, I don't know if you understand that question at all, Richard. Um, I'm not sure we've ever said that we wouldn't do one way. So obviously, we have a preference for doing return flights because we're operating to a charter model, but we're flexible and we recognize that for our May flights, um, it could be that a two-week stay is inadequate. So we're trying to be flexible. We're trying to make sure that we meet the needs of our customers. So if people want to mix and match, fly with Atlantic Star in one direction, fly with Comair in the other. We want to give them that opportunity and they can, uh, they can road test our service against the Comair service and see which they like the best. Excellent. Okay, that's, uh, that's good. So that's uh, a little more update for those people uh, looking at you know, different ways and means of tailoring your travel. Uh, we've got Andrew Duncan. He said, good morning. I would like to take my family home for the very first time. Would there be any family ticket deals? Uh, hi, Andrew. So, uh, with regard to family ticket deals, uh, with Priority Club, we have um, given people the opportunity to save 50, make a £50 saving on their tickets for the flights in May. Uh, and we've also done what is a, quite an unusually low price for, uh, for our child fares, in that um, the child fare is about two thirds of the adult fare. Uh, whereas, for if you look on the, the Comair or British Airways pricing, it's more like 80% of the full fare. So um, I recognise that for a lot of people, you know, perhaps two adults, three adults, two children, three children, those kind of combinations that, that the prices are, are, are still high and that, that's a function of the fact that any aircraft that operates into St. Lena can own, has to operate with 60 empty seats. Uh, whether it's our aeroplane or Comet's aeroplane, we have to operate with, with maximum of around about 120, 130 passengers on board, depending on how much baggage they choose to bring. Um, and that's the reason that the pricing is never going to be as cheap as, say, uh, jumping on um, an Emirates aeroplane to, to Sydney. You know, you go to Sydney on Emirates, you can probably do that for £600, but there's 500 other people on the aeroplane with you. 
when you go to St. Helena, there's only 120 people in the airplane. And for that reason, the, the operating economics uh, of the St. Helena route are a lot more challenging than being able to fill up a wide body airplane on, uh, on a long haul service. So, the best way to get the best deal uh, on our May flights is to join Priority Club, and uh, we mm -hmm. will be doing um, obviously some pricing for October and Christmas that reflects the fact that families want to get together and we'll do our best to try to keep um, child fares at, uh, at a reasonable level. Ah, so there we go. So for all the families, um, that's the, I guess, the answer to the question. And I'm sure, you know, if you have any questions, just drop Richard an email and, you know, the guys at uh, A-Star is really good at coming back. Uh, obviously, they're very busy right now, but they are responding and they are answering the questions. I mean, and, you know, if you have any issues um, with that, I'm sure Richard can fix it, but there's no issue. We are, you know, working hard. The time is get, uh, coming near and everything's ramping up. So there's a lot of um, organization to do with a small team to deliver what I think is a great product. We've got Helene Williams, I guess you're in the UK. Sarah Thomas, you're in no, Royal. No, Helene, she's from, she's going from Helena. Hello. Is she? Oh, yeah. okay. And, and hello from, to Sarah in Royal Wood Bassett. Hello. Okay, I'm getting it myself. Oh, right, interesting. So let's have a look. Ah, now here's a technical question for you. Looking at uh, uh, the pilots and how they'll be trained. So here's the question. Uh, how have you, uh, to fly pilots, been trained to prepare for landing at St. Helena? Um, I'm not sure if Richard answers that, can answer that question, but I was under the impression if you're a pilot and <laughs> You can fly an aircraft, St. Helena is no different to anywhere else in the world. Am I right in saying that, or does it require special training? Um, th there are some, some specific high PHR. So, um, two fly are going to set up the instrument approach procedures that the pilots are going to have to fly in their 737 simulator in Amsterdam. And so the pilots that are going to come out and, and fly the first flights will, um, will have practiced those instrument flight procedures before they come. Uh, and they've also picked um, two of their most senior pilots, I think they've got two senior training captains, one of whom is also the chief pilot of the 737 fleet, uh, is coming out to, uh, to conduct the first few flights. Uh, and with regard to the relatively short landing operation at St. Helena, it's actually quite similar to a number of other world aerodromes. Um, one of the ones that two fly will probably use, uh, again for their simulation, will be perhaps either Aberdeen or maybe Gibraltar. Uh, which are both very similar in terms of their runway characteristics. So um, they are absolutely prepared. They're a very professional, very serious, um, very well financed airline that, um, that are making sure that every precaution is taken to make sure that operations into St. Lena uh, are safe as well as obviously good value and, and a good customer proposition. So yeah, they're, they're doing everything they need to do to make sure that they're safe. Excellent. So let's have a look. Uh, D. Smith has asked, what are chances of, of going on the first flight as a priority club holder? I guess that's... Hello, Dee. Yeah, we, we still have space on our first flights, both out of Luton and also out of St. Helena. But we will be closing priority club next week. As soon as the airport is certified, we'll be going on sale with tickets. So if you want to be, first of all, on those first flights, and second of all, want to save yourself £50 on the flights in May, uh, so either leaving Luton on the... 22nd of May or leaving St. Helena on the 23rd of May. Um, if you're in the UK or if you've got access to the internet, then you can join Priority Club via our website. Um, if you're in St. Helena, then you can um, join at Solomon's uh, Travel, which is in the Mal Malabar in Jamestown. So that opportunity will stop on uh, Wednesday the 21st, so exactly a month before the airport official opening, Priority Club closes. Uh, and the opportunity to save that £50 on the first flight will, will disappear. So um, I'd recommend that you get yourself um, signed up for Priority Club as soon as possible. There we go. And then we have Della Samuel. She said, how do we book tickets to St. Helena? Can you just go over that again, I guess? Some yeah, people certainly. are not Hi, so Della. No, that's fine. Uh, um, so you can, so um, tickets will go on sale next week as soon as the airport certification is announced. Uh, we expect that to happen next week. If that doesn't happen next week, we'll communicate that to our, um, our customers via e the email subscription stream that I know many of you are on, and also via social media. But we expect to be able to go on sale next week, so you'll be able to book tickets either via our website, atlanticstarairlines.com, um, again, at Solomon's, 
or by calling uh, travel packs offices in London and we'll be able to send you those details when we send out all the ticketing information that will go out to our email subscribers. If you're not yet an email subscriber, then you can subscribe again by visiting our website. So there we go, Della. Get onto the website, AtlanticStarAirlines.com, and I'm sure you can almost make a booking within a couple of days and have it confirmed. I think looking at the forecast now, the uh, tabletop for the uh, towards to work towards the certification has com been completed Friday. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah, I think the CL300 uh, airplane left on Friday, and um, ASI obviously needs to have a look at uh, the data that they've gathered uh, during the week and uh, and come up with some conclusions and some outcomes from that. But uh, certainly, our understanding is that uh, they haven't found anything that's likely to delay certification and delay the airport opening on the 21st of May. But it looks positive because if you look at what's happened in the last two days, I'm not sure if you guys saw the posting that I made yesterday on the website to say that the 737-800 is going in on Monday. If there was a real issue, uh, would Comair or BA take the risk of flying the 737-800 uh, in? I'm sure it looks more positive yeah. from what we're... Absolutely. The vibes we're getting. Yeah, uh, Comair are, uh, again, are an excellent airline. Um, with a good safety record, uh, and British Airways doesn't um, put its tail fin on, on any old airline. You know, Comair are very heavily audited by British Airways. They're a good airline. I'm, I'm not going to sit here and criticise them. I think our service um, direct to the UK is a better service than they're offering, but in terms of their safety record, in terms of how seriously they're taking their responsibilities, um, they're absolutely on the money. And they wouldn't be bringing an aircraft in next week, uh, least of all their brand new aircraft that's just come into the fleet, they wouldn't be taking the aircraft to St Helena unless they were happy that everything to do with airport operations um, was going according to plan. Uh, I know that a lot of people on the island are perhaps a little bit pessimistic about what's going on with the airport, the fact it's not going to happen and it's not going to open, but when you think where we were five years ago and where we are today, an, an awful lot of brilliant work has happened and an awful lot of amazing milestones have been achieved. Uh, and now, actually, it's, it's up to Saints to really grasp that and to really make the most of the opportunity that's coming their way because this is 2016 2017 is critical for the island in terms of really putting itself on the world tourism map. We've only got you only have one opportunity for a first night, and, uh, and certainly in this first night is, is, is coming really. So it, it's important that, that everybody really gets on board and is positive about, um, about, what's, about what's happening. Excellent. Hello to Sharon Williams up there in Milton Kings. Hi, Sharon. <laughs> Sharon, um, you've asked, I'm looking at, to travel to St. Helena at the end of the year. My daughter will be 11 years. Will she be eligible for a child's fear? Yes, she will, provided that she's under 12 uh, on the date of travel. She'll be eligible for a child fear. Oh, good. I haven't seen anything published. I guess that's something you're working towards. Um, I've only seen your price pricing for a return trip based on, obviously, grown-ups. Uh, I guess that will be something that will be put on the website uh, with the terms of reference, is that correct? Yeah, with, uh, with Priority Club, um, the, the Priority Club saving on an adult fare takes the base fare down to 1249 and for a child it takes it down to 749. Um, mm -hmm. When we go on sale next week, the standard fares will be 1299 and 799, but we will be doing some single fares as well. Uh, and I know that Pietro asked a question about that. Um, you'll have to wait till next week to find out what our fares are going to be for uh, single, single tickets. Uh, I do know what they are, but uh, sure. now is probably not the time to go through. Fine. Uh, Pietro has asked a very interesting question. I know in your interview with um, St. FM, they mentioned about food. And obviously, as you know, coming from St. Helena, uh, it's more important to have the food correct than to get the flight off the ground. But Pietro has asked, any catering at St. Helena or will the meals be brought in I don't understand this question. From well, Banjul. From Banjul. Well, understand. to be honest, Petro, I went to Banjul and I had an amazing meal there. I mean, it's all natural, uh, you know, food. So maybe Richard can answer the question. Yeah, you, you can't just put any food that you like on an airplane, as I'm sure Pietro knows. Um, there's no um, flight kitchen available on St. Helena that can produce airline, um, airline standard food at the present time. We'd love to be able to pick up catering at, at some future stage. But for now, we'll cater out of London down to Banjul. 
uh, Tui Fly have uh, their own flight kitchens in Banjul that will do ban the food for Banjul down to St. Helena and return, and they will pick up more catering in Banjul for the London bound leg. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so, so what you're saying, you're not taking any food at St. Helena, am I correct? Is that correct? No, we won't be picking okay. any up in St. Helena. Sure. It will be, it will be a, basically, we do snacks between Banjul and St. Helena and back, and then we do main meals between Banjul and London. Okay. Ah, oh, we have a trolley dolly question here. Hi, Sarah Brown. Uh, I think you're down in South Wales. <laughs> it's an interesting question, this. Uh, I'm amazed it hasn't come up before, but will you be taking on any saints to become the in-flight crew, I guess? Are you ready for that? <laughs> We're not ready for that yet. We will do, eventually. Um, and I know of at least two um, saints who currently work as cabin crew, in fact. Uh, one who works for the Royal Air Force and one who works for British Airways. Um, in fact, now I can, think, I can think of three. I can think of two ladies and one gentlemen, all of whom uh, are saints who, who work as, as cabin crew right now. Not yet, at the moment we're going to be using our lovely Dutch Tui Fly crew uh, and they'll be, uh, they'll be on our flights, but eventually we'd like to have saints involved in the business, of course we would. It's just a matter of time and, uh, and managing the business sensibly um, for the next year or two while we get ourselves really kind of established and set up within within the, the tourism business and, and when we can do that in terms of expanding maybe looking at getting our own aircraft and so on and so forth having our own crew we'd love to do that but small steps we need to go one step at a time sure just another question on crew just kind of came to mind what will happen with regards to change ever of crew where will they change obviously in st Lina is not ideal because you'll have to accommodate crew on the island where are you hoping to do a crew change so what happens is uh, one crew will operate from Luton to Banjul, they'll then get off. Uh, another crew will be waiting in Banjul and will operate Banjul, St. Helena, and then from St. Helena back to Banjul. And then another crew will be ready to do Banjul back to Luton. Excellent. So that kind of wraps that up. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, <laughs> someone's asked, can we make sure we have fish cakes on board? Well, no. that answers the question. No fish cakes, sorry. With, with regards to not being able to take food on at St. Helena, uh, I guess to be able to meet the criteria for you know, food on an aircraft doesn't, we cannot really deliver that in St. Helena right now. So we have Sean Leo, uh, Sean's from Southampton, will, will there be any increase in the cost of the fare during the UK school holiday periods? I can understand where Sean's coming from because that's what, happen, that's what happens now with travel agents and the airline industry when there is half term all the prices get ramped up. Will that be happening with you, with you guys? Up to a point, yes. Um, all airlines um, tend to seasonally vary their pricing, and the reason is they try to make sure that they, they still have bums on seats in the, in the low seasons, and they try to do their best to, to make profit when they can in the high season. So at the moment our situation is that we want to make sure that Atlantic Star breaks even through the year. On the first two flights that we've got in May, we, we price them very competitively. Uh, as you'll see next week when we come out with our, with our final ticket pricing, uh, some of the prices will be extremely competitive. Um, but that means that those flights will not make any money. We, we always recognise that that would be the case. But in order to get A star towards break even towards the end of the year, um, our October and our Christmas prices will be more expensive than the May flights. That's why one of the things I really want to emphasise today is if you want to go to St. Helena this year and you want to get the best possible price uh, for a UK down to the island return fare, join Priority Club this weekend or certainly before Wednesday because the 1249 price for the adult base return fare is the cheapest price we will offer this year. And our pricing in October and our pricing at Christmas will have to be more expensive. Um, we, can, we can afford to obviously invest so much capital with it into the company, but Atlantic Star is a business and it does need in order to, to cover its costs. And in order to do that, um, our prices at uh, October and at Christmas will be cheaper than BA, but will be a lot cheaper than BA. Uh, will also be a lot cheaper and better than the other alternatives going through Joburg because you won't need to nice stop in Joburg. So our pricing will be good, but it will not be as cheap as the main pricing. Excellent. Just to go back on the Priority Club, I have to be quite honest, I didn't really read in great detail, but just to tell our audience here, the Priority Club, if you join the Priority Club today and say you decide you don't want to fly or you can't fly in the next year, what happens uh, You know, with your, you've, 
you've invested in the priority club, but you haven't taken advantage of it. And you decide, well, I'm not really going to fly with uh, A-Star, I'm going to go via South Africa, or I'm not going to go at all for whatever reason. Um, okay. Can they get their money back, or how no. does it work? No, so Priority Club is only for the flights in May. So it's, um, it's only for the, for the flight leaving Luton on the 22nd of May, or the flight leaving St. Lena on the 23rd of May. It's specifically to allow people to book their seat, not to book their seat, but to be able to commit to that flight um, before we could get tickets on sale. That's, that's entirely what Priority Club was about. Um, it also gives people a £50 discount, or effectively a £50 saving, uh, when they go to book their ticket. So if anybody books or joins Priority Club and then chooses not to fly, they lose their £50. And the reason is, we don't want people to book and think, well, may, I might go, I might not, because that then prevents somebody else from joining the club and actually getting, getting on the aircraft. So um, if you want to make a saving and you want to fly with us in May, join Priority Club, um, because it guarantees your place in the aircraft and it saves you money. Excellent. Okay, so Sharon Williams asked about will there be additional flights for Christmas? Uh, at the moment we're planning on doing um, two flights in October, one, one mid-October, one end of October, uh, one in mid-December and one in early January. So people will be able to either go uh, out to the island for about three weeks over the Christmas period um, or people will be able to go uh, out on either of the October flights and have a much longer stay on the island and either be back in the UK before Christmas or come back on the first flight in January. Um, are we intending to put extra flights on over Christmas? No we're not uh, and the reason for that is we want to make sure that the October and the Christmas flights uh, are full. Um, uh, if, if we were to absolutely sell out the Christmas flight in a matter of minutes we could potentially look at putting on a second one but we need to make sure those flights are full and that's another reason why in terms of people thinking I might go in May, I might go in October, I might go at Christmas, please bear in mind it will cost more money to go in October or, or to go at Christmas and we only have a certain number of seats, there's only 120, 130 seats depending on what baggage options people bring that we can get on, on those aircraft. Um, so we won't be able to get every saint from the UK out to the island at Christmas. Um, we've already looked at the BA pricing at Christmas and I think you can expect uh, that British Airways return will be around about £2,200 for a Christmas flight. Um, if you go out on another carrier, maybe Qatar Airways or something like that, the price would be probably more like £1,600, £1,700, maybe a little bit more once you include a night stop in Johannesburg on the way down. We will certainly be competitive in comparison to those fares, but we will only have 120, 125 seats. So it will be a little bit like the RMS in the sense that people would, would really do very well to, to try to book as early as possible for those Christmas flights. We want to get as many people on as possible, but we actually have to make sure that those flights um, make financial sense such that uh, Atlantic Star at least gets close to break even by the end of the year. Excellent. We have Angela Lawrence. Um, we're going to take this question and then we're going to go to our questions that has been emailed in uh, to us as well, and then we'll come back to the questions that's coming in live. Angela Lawrence, can you explain the difference between economy and economy plus? Um, hi Angela, good question. So um, economy plus, the extra features are uh, more legroom, um, there's only four people sitting in a seat row rather than six, so you've got more kind of spreading out room because there'll be nobody sat in the middle seat. Um, you also get lounge access at, uh, at Luton before you go. Um, you also get fast track through security at, uh, at Luton, uh, rather than mm -hmm. to go through the standard uh, channels, and you get uh, a standard 23 kilogram uh, baggage allowance rather than our economy baggage allowance, the most basic of which is 15 kilograms. So, um, all those features very quickly again more leg room, more elbow room, lounge access, fast track security, and a bigger baggage allowance. Good question, though, thank you. There we go. We've got a couple of more coming in here live, but we're going to go to um, some of the ones that I've emailed in. And I think you've probably answered uh, some of the questions here, but uh, someone's emailed in and asked, what happens after the charter trial run UK, St. Lena and return has completed? I think pretty much we've wrapped that up, but I don't know if you've got anything to say towards that. Um, well, I'm not sure that we call it a trial run. Uh, we're doing six flights in 2016. We intend to do more in 2017. Uh, we're very encouraged by what's been announced this week in terms of the expansion of the consulate uh, and enhancing the, uh, the facilities of the consulate. Also, the fact that things are moving forward with 
uh, with Shelco uh, at um, uh, Wirebird Hills, um, as well as of course 123 Main, which all of which will be moving forward and will be having more more tourist accommodation available in 2017. So these flights are on a trial; they're just the, the start of us um, building Atlantic Star as a business. Um, once we've got the May flight out of the way, that's our focus right now. So once we've got the first two flights in May and June done, then we're going to sit down with two fly and talk about um, our 2017 program. And we will start to, to look at firming up those dates um, once, we've, uh, once we've got our October and Christmas flights on sale. So um, we, we've got a lot of exciting things going forward and we will be doing more flights in 2017. Oh, excellent. Yes, one of about 20. Assuming that the first flight uh, is more of a trial run to UK to St. Helena, obviously this uh, person thinks this is a trial run and, and might not have realised this is the beginning of the UK long haul. Uh, will a star look at other options? For example, if passenger numbers don't meet the airline uh, requirement, will a star consider looking at the possibility of the aircraft offering passengers and cargo? Uh, we're already doing that, so um, anybody who's interested in moving cargo between the UK and St Helena, uh, we've got a partnership with Richard James International, who I know many of you will be aware of. Um, they're great guys, uh, they've got a lot of expert in freight, um, so we're, we're kind of partnering with them. So if you've got any uh, large packages um, or any unusual items that you want to be able to move back and forth from the UK and St Helena or St Helena in the UK, Contact RJI and they will be able to uh, arrange um, for all of your cargo needs to be met um, using belly freight on our charter services. So we'll be bringing some freight in on both of uh, both the May and June services this year. So if you need anything urgently, get hold of RJI and um, they'll be able to uh, they'll be able to help you. And uh, we'll be glad to have uh, as much cargo on board as we can possibly fit. Okay, so we're going to probably answer two questions here. Adrian Marie Stevens is asked, can you tell us what the baggage weight allowance will be? But I've also got a question here because there's a lot of focus on, on baggage allowance as you know. I'm not sure if you've traveled to St. Helena before uh, or know the procedure, but when you go on the ship obviously yeah, Saints you get a, are... You get a cubic meter. You get a cubic meter and you'll get to probably um, sly a few more in depending on who you know, <laughs> but in this case it's, you know, we have been changing the game. And the, if questions come in by email, uh, once the airline's up and running, will A-Star consider increasing the weight of the baggage allowance? Can you explain a bit more on the reason behind the 15 kilos, what's going to happen in the future, and how we can probably um, give some answers to the baggage? Right, okay, so we're always going to keep 15 kilos, and the reason for that is that um, whilst most airlines are restricted on, on their, their absolute revenue stream, by the number of seats in the airplane, as, as we all know, that's not the case with St. Helena. It's all about weight. It's all about how much the aircraft weighs when it lands. That's why both for us and Comair, we both operate the same airplanes, 737-800, we're always going to be operating in with a maximum payload of around about 13 tonnes. Uh, so the way that you choose to generate revenue off that 13 tonnes is obviously at, you know, at the airline's discretion. Um, if we get people to carry less baggage, it means we can carry more people, we carry more people, we can spread the cost of the flight over a greater number of individuals, and that brings the price down. So uh, we'll always give people the opportunity to book a base fare with 15 kilos of baggage, but if they want to carry either 23 or 30 or even 40 or even 50 kilos of baggage, you have a choice to do that, but you will have to pay extra for that, uh, for that opportunity. Um, if you're travelling in Economy Plus, the base is 23 and the extend is 30 or 40 or 50. So it's all about giving people choice. It's not about saying you can't come with more baggage. Of course you can. You can come with 50 kilos of baggage if you want, but you have to recognise that that needs to be paid for, that there's a, there's a revenue that needs to be derived from bringing that extra baggage. I know this is new for some saints who are used to travelling on the RMS. You know, cubic metre didn't matter what it weighed. Um, but in the aviation business, weight is absolutely everything, particularly uh, to a remote location like St Helena with uh, a relatively short runway. So that's the reason that our base economy baggage is 15 kilos, but you can carry more. Excellent. So let's talk about delays. Uh, the questions come in uh, to ask about delays. If there was a major delay on the flight leaving UK, what is the procedure for all passengers? I'll also wrap up with another question 
with regard to delays. What happens if you get to St. Helena and you cannot get to the all in? And if you need to divert, where will you go? And what would be the procedure for the passengers if there was an overnight stop at that destination? Okay, well, obviously, uh, delays are generally to do with either the aircraft having a technical problem or to do with weather. Um, aircraft technical problems are not common, but they, but they do occur. Uh, weather factors at St. Helena will be significant, and so there is always the possibility of, uh, of the aircraft not being able to make an approach and not being able to make a landing much as it is at any other airport, but a bit like Gibraltar, which is a, a good example that I bring up, you know, weather diversions are relatively common at Gibraltar just because of the, the topography of, uh, of that destination and the weather factor there. So it's a possibility, we've talked to TUI Fly about it. Um, if the aircraft significantly delayed in Banjul for whatever reason, we would put people in the hotel in Banjul. Um, if, if necessary, TUI Fly have got a contract with Hotel in Banjul to be able to do that. Um, if the aircraft got to the island and the weather wasn't suitable but it was likely to improve, then the aircraft would divert to Ascension, pick up more fuel, and then come back and have a second go at getting into, um, into St. Helena. In the event that the aircraft got to St. Helena and the weather was a long way below limits uh, so, and it looked like it was likely to remain that way, then the more sensible thing to do, rather than go to Ascension, um, where obviously accommodation is limited, the aircraft would then return to Banjul and another attempt would be made once the weather was improved. Um, two five got contingencies in place for all these different situations, but clearly when you combine different weather factors, different time factors, I can't give you a finite answer what we will do in every situation because every situation will be different. But what I can tell you is that we will always look after you and that we will not going to leave you stranded anyway. I think that's probably the most important thing. Tui Fly have got an excellent reputation in terms of customer service. They don't want to um, damage their reputation by letting people down, and, and certainly neither do we. So I hope that answers the question. Okay, someone else has asked, have you ever thought of running a charter to attract French tourists to the island for Napoleonic interests? Good question. Uh, yes, we have, and yes, we will. Uh, we, know, we know when uh, the Napoleonic significant date is, it's a May date, and uh, we're looking at potentially doing a charter that comes out of Paris, direct to the island, perhaps stays to, for just a short period, maybe as, as short as three or four days, um, to do uh, a short, high quality um, vacation for um, French historical enthusiasts, um, and then returns directly to Paris. Um, as some of you know, um, Andy Radford, my fellow director, um, lives in Toulouse in South France. Um, he's a pretty good French speaker and his, his girlfriend Natalie um, obviously is French. Uh, so it's something that they're probably going to manage for us uh, in association with a, a couple of the French historical societies. There's one in particular that's all about Napoleonic, Napoleonic history and another one that is a more general historical society and our intention is to talk to them uh, with a view to putting a package together, not for 2016, but for 2017. Excellent. Okay, we're just about to wrap up. We've got a couple of more questions here that was emailed, but if you've got any more, just put them in the comments below of this streaming video, and we'll ask Richard, because we've been on air for 47 minutes now, which is probably <laughs> worked out longer than we originally... Uh, time this. Yeah, we originally thought. Uh, in your last interview, a question was asked about playing a St. Helena song in the cabin on takeoff and landing. Now, I'm not sure if this works uh, for an aircraft, but it's an old traditional thing for those of you who, who know uh, it's a St. Helena song that's played on board the RMS when it leaves port. Is this really a consideration? Because in reality, the song in question is not ideal for the occasion. What's your thoughts? Or was that just a random question someone asked? I think that it's, that's a bit <laughs> random, isn't it? So, um, my St. Helena Island, I, I don't have any strong views on it either way. Some people tell me you, it's just, it'll be just like being on the RMS. You must play my St. Helena Island. Yeah, everybody, but we're moving to a new era here. Everybody will have it. Other people say, please don't play my St. Helena Island. It'll only upset everybody. So, um, if, if you'd all like to get together amongst yourselves and tell us whether you want us to play it or not, and then get back to me, if everybody wants me to play it, we'll play it. If everybody doesn't want me to play it, we won't play it. I'm, I'm very happy to be led by our customers on this, so just let me know. I'd be quite happy with a bit of Frank Sinatra, come fly with me, or something like that. 
if, if, if people want to email me some suggestions, then I'm only too happy to take guidance about my Sunalina Island. I understand. For me, <laughs> for me, I don't want it. Okay, it's just my opinion. Okay, you're supposed to be being a journalist. Here. I you're am not a, allowed to have an opinion. I, I am. I understand. But I worked on this ship for six years, so that song drove me nuts for six years. You just imagine, <laughs> that, you know, if I'm going on your flight on the 22nd, then I've got to hear that after being there for six years. I tell you what, we'll get a vote together online yeah, and see it. if people. Yeah, you, like, you, you run an online vote and tell me. Um, first of all, do you want my Island? And if you don't want that, what else do you want? You exactly. Want That's a great idea. Whatever you like. That's a great Probably idea. Yourself. Okay, so just one last question, I think, on here, unless we've got another one. So someone said, no, don't play it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> there we go. So there's your first, first vote. First vote is in, no doubt. Exactly. Uh, I mean, one from Pam here. As a TV shareholder, do I get priority? <coughs> um, no. As a priority club member in Atlantic Star, that gets you priority. We want to bring you, we want to transition you from from your existing uh, shareholder to Atlantic Star Pam, so you need to jump ship, okay? Sounds this good. is the new era here, we're moving forward. Uh, someone say, let's have a look. Thank you so much, enjoyed watching uh, Marilyn Rowell in Bullingham, UK. Hi Marilyn. You mentioned in your last interview taking the governor's dog to the island. What is the process for taking animals to the island in the future? Can A Star offer any guidelines to this? Okay, if you want to um, if you want to bring any animals out to the island, we're happy to help. Uh, Tui Fly have got the necessary permissions to be able to carry um, dogs, cats or, or other animals in the holes. They're, they're pressurised and heated so the animals won't get cold and they won't be starved of oxygen. They breathe the same air that all the passengers do. They just sat below decks. Um, and Dusty, the governor's dog, is coming out on flight one. Uh, we'd be happy to take other, other pets on the way out. And what we can't do at the moment is carry pets from St Helena back to the UK. Now originally we said we were going to be able to do that uh, and that was because Gatwick, which was our original choice uh, in terms of our UK airfield, has got what's called a pets handling facility, an arrival facility where animals, if they are unwell on arrival, can be uh, quarantined. Um, Luton does not have that facility, so we've had to uh, backtrack on that and say that for the moment we can't bring pets back into the UK. If we get access to Gatwick at some later stage, that, that situation will change. I would say for anybody who wants to uh, bring a pet out to the island on the May or June flights, or indeed at October or, or at Christmas, then uh, send us an email um, either to my, my email address, I know many of you have, or indeed via the customer service email address that's on the website, and uh, we'll deal with you that way. Excellent. So Sarah Brown has said in the bottom of the comments here, Saints are musical, get a competition going for the new song and vote on it. There Except, you go. There we go. So we'll look at that, Sarah. That's, that's for him to do. And I'll, I'm uh, not getting involved in music. <laughs> we, we're not sure what we're going to reward in the price yet, but we, we can talk that through um, as well. Oh, that reminds me, actually. Um, for, for Saints who are on the island, um, the guides are organising uh, a raffle. Uh, I think it's associated with um, the, my, not the Miss St. Molina competition, uh, and they've contacted us. And uh, we've given away uh, a free flight on, uh, on our first flight from St. Molina to the UK, and then back to St. Molina again, uh, to the winner of the raffle. So we've given a, a, a raffle prize for some person to travel to London and back for free. Uh, so if you're on the island, buy a raffle ticket from the guides and either you get a free flight on flight one or there's a 500 pound voucher that you can use on any flight in 2016 and I think the third prize is a 250 pound voucher for any flight uh, on a start in 2016. So um, go and buy a raffle ticket, um, do some good, raise some money uh, with the guides and, uh, and maybe you'll get lucky and we'll see you on flight one. So just we rewind on that. That is, uh, in terms of reference for that raffle, do you have to be on? Obviously, you have to be on island for that, or you have to be an islander. I mean, can you kind of publicise a bit more so we could kind of tell everybody? You know, we don't want to get confused with people in the UK trying to win this raffle. It, how does it work? A bit more. Um, well, it's it's really it's just for people on the island. Okay, fair enough. The, the guides, um, the guys are certainly you know very active. Do lots of great lots of great things. They approached us uh, and asked if we would uh, we would help them out. And, uh, and we thought that um, it, would be, it would be great to be able to offer um, some raffle prizes so that uh, sure. somebody on the island is going to fly to London for free. So let's, let's take this a step further. I just had a thought, which is a real dangerous thing here. Why can't we not open up that competition 
and people outside of St. Helena can buy tickets and award them to someone on the island for the travel. I mean, surely that's an attraction because one, the guys will get the funding, someone could pay for a raffle ticket, but the terms of reference remains that a person on island would benefit from that ticket. Is that possible? Yeah, I don't see why not. I think we can do I'm that. I'm sure that would be an attraction for you and also would help to whoever's getting the funding or the funds from the raffle would help the organisation in uh, concern. Yeah. yeah, so any saints that are in the UK, um, buy a raffle ticket if you win, you can give it to somebody on the island. There we go. So there we go, that will work. Oh, totally. Another question uh, from Helene Williams. Will Miss St Helena get a free flight? <laughs> um, not the X ones, no, not the ones from years gone by, Helene, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, Miss St Helena won't get a free flight and the reason for that and the reason that we've done the raffle is because we wanted it to be fair so that everybody on the island gets an equal chance to get a free flight and we thought that just by restricting it to Miss St Helena, obviously it means that you know, I, I guess probably no guys have ever won Miss St Helena because we thought that was kind of maybe a little bit unfair. So that's the reason that we've made it a raffle so that um, hopefully it, it generates some, some fundraising but it's, it's an equal chance for everybody to, uh, to, to win a free flight. Excellent. Now the, uh, they're all pouring in now. So let's walk back here to this question here. Debbie Bailey. Hi, Debbie. Christmas will be very popular and will need lots of early planning. What will be the likely Christmas date and how much time in advance will they be released for booking? Now, that's a very good question. Debbie, brilliant question. Good afternoon. Lovely to, lovely to see you. Um, we will release uh, the Christmas dates and get them on sale as soon as the May and June flights uh, are completed. So our focus at the moment is May and June. Um, we will then get the Christmas, Christmas flights underway. Uh, but as I said before, and I really want to emphasize this, our May flights will be the best value flights that you will ever, ever get on Atlantic Star in terms of uh, our pricing. Our pricing in October and our pricing at Christmas will not be as cheap as 12 dollars um, I can't say specifically how much more expensive it will be, and we promise that we will be cheaper and better value than the Comair and VA offerings and, and all of the routings through Johannesburg. We will be better priced than that, but we will not be able to do Christmas at 12.99 um, because we need to make sure the business breaks even um, through the year. Okay, let's have a look. That's a good idea about the tickets. How much are the tickets? I'm not sure if I'm we know that. Are we talking about raffle tickets? Yes. Um, you'll need to talk to the guys on the island about that. I suspect they've probably got something in the pipeline to go in the paper either this week or next week. Um, but for sure, it, it's a, we think it's a great prize. You know, £250 voucher, £500 voucher, and a free, and a free return flight um, with us um, on flight one. So um, uh, where, wherever it is that you are, um, make sure you buy some raffle tickets. Let's make sure we uh, we raise some money with the guides, uh, and also that, um, that three people are going to get some amazing prizes. Excellent. Maybe we should have to change contacts on um, on the raffle tickets um, because I could help by putting it on my website, uh, singlelinalocal.com. I need to talk to the guide organizer on Ireland and maybe jack up an online payment for those people uh, uh, beyond St. Helena who wants to pay online then we could do it online and then we could then do the exchange with the guides back on the island so we can work out how to make the payment. Because it looks, sure. It's going to become very difficult for someone who lives in Australia once they donate the ticket to someone in St. Helena. So that probably could work. Um, let's have a look. So uh, we've got some more questions here. Great idea with the raffle. Joe Peters. So is it the raffle ticket? Uh, yeah, this so Petra, okay. Yeah, will this live stream be recorded and rebroadcast later one more time? Johnny, I think yes, we yes, we can do that. Um, we can do that. We just hope that this has been recorded now, but it's no problem. We can work around that. It'll take a couple of days to. to I, I want to edit this as well, to be honest. We don't want the fire alarm and the falling over of the camera and all that as well. Thank you. I'm in Bur Billingham. We'll buy from my mom out at Smith's Point in St. Helena. Great, Kate. Brilliant. See, that idea works because, of course, there's lots of people who love to see their relatives for two weeks in the UK. I mean, wouldn't that be amazing? Yeah. The next third, I want to come home for the Christmas with my husband for two or three months. I'm waiting to book as well. Where do we stand with weight on the luggage for the length of time out there? Okay. Obviously, uh, you might have um, not caught up with what Richard mentioned earlier, um, Tony, but Richard mentioned that uh, the luggage, you can actually bring extra luggage. But if you look through this video, it can be explained, and maybe Richard can explain a little yeah. bit more. So very quickly, um, if you want to go for two, three months, you can catch one of our October flights. Um, 
there mid and end of October, and then there'll be a mid-December flight in the first week of January, so you can make your choice about whether you want to be back in the UK for Christmas or when you, whether you want to stay on the island until January. I understand New Year on the island is pretty good, so uh, you might want to stay for that. Um, in terms of luggage, the standard is 15 kilos, but if you want 23, 30, 40, or even 50 kilos, all of those are options for you. It just means that you have to pay more money to take more luggage, simple as that. There we go. So that perhaps answers your question. I know there's a lot of uh, discussion about the luggage, and like I said before, I keep repeating this, but we're used to the ship and putting in a cubic meter of cargo, and obviously this has changed the whole um, the whole way we do business. And hi, Susan McNee up there in Scotland, I think. Susan's from my uh, neighbourhood, so we're all going back to St. Lena soon, okay. I think. Obviously, she's on here for, for a reason, and she's probably also looking... Just one more question um, with regards to long-term support for A-Star on the island. At the moment, all bookings via Solomons. Are there any plans to dedicate a go-to point of contact to deal with the issues, bookings, tailored requests on island as Solomons are just a third-party agent that would not be able to deal with daily individual requests on island leading up to flight arriving and departure from the island? What's your plans? Long-term, we'd like to have somebody permanently on the island working for us. Um, but we need to obviously, as I've said before, take small steps. Uh, we can't set up our own office, have somebody there permanently, have all of that fixed cost without adding that onto ticket prices. So uh, we love Solomons. They're a great uh, company to work with. They've been extremely helpful to us over the last um, few months, both in terms of what they, they've offered us with priority club bookings and also going forward in terms of people being able to uh, walk into uh, Solomons in the Malabar. Uh, and book tickets, which, as I say, hopefully will be able to, to start happening next week. So they've got a lot of expertise, uh, and uh, we want to keep working with them. We've also got a partnership uh, in place with Andrew Weir, and uh, we're going to be working with them in terms of doing some, some ticketing and some bits going forward with, uh, with some passenger activity for them. But, yeah, ultimately, it would be nice to have a little A-star travel shop somewhere in Jamestown have somebody permanently there that can offer customer support and help people with bookings and so on and so forth. So we want to do that, but we need to make sure that um, the airline is of the right size um, and that we can cover those costs adequately. So at the moment, we want to do our best to offer the best possible value for money for Saints, and the way to do that is to partner with existing businesses. Here's a good question. If you're over the baggage weight, what is the price per kilo? Um, price per kilo, off the top of my head, I think is £10 per kilo. Uh, I would need to go back and check. It, that will be made clear at check-in, obviously. But off the top of my head, I think we settled on £10 a kilo. Excellent. Okay. Dave Brown. Hi, Dave. Will there be any concessions for service personnel and service veterans from Marlborough in Wiltshire? Hi, Dave. Um, in the immediate future, the answer to that is no. Uh, and the reason is that obviously we get a lot of approaches from people from all sorts of different backgrounds, um, all of whom would like to be able to travel um, without paying full price for the ticket. Uh, and whilst um, I've got a great deal of uh, respect for uh, our armed services personnel, my father was in, served in the Royal Air Force, so um, I, I do have a, a family connection in terms of the, 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 the forces. At the moment, we simply, as a startup company, we simply can't afford to offer um, discounts to different, different groups of people. It could be that eventually in the future we do reach a point where we do, but I'm sorry, the answer for the moment is no. But uh, I hope that, that doesn't prevent you from, uh, from travelling with us. And uh, I'll just go back and mention again, Priority Club, if you sign up, that's going to give you a discount on our, uh, on our ticket prices when we go on sale next week. I hope that answers your question. And I'm sorry that I can't give you a more positive answer with regard to discounts at this stage, but I hope that you can at least understand why. Excellent. This Christmas flight seems to be really popular. I mean, already Susan uh, has mentioned you're looking to come home for, um, for Christmas. I mean, if you, like you said earlier, if you get bookings to fill an aircraft for the Christmas run, um, I'm sure there's potential for, for the second one. I mean, looking at this now, people are already planning for Christmas, and it's not that far away. No, that's true. So once the flight comes back on the the second flight comes back on the sixth of June, once that's landed, I think that's when we'll look to get Christmas, uh, October and Christmas flights underway. If they still out super quick, we could potentially look at putting on a second service. But what I'm really keen to emphasise here is that we're running six flights in 2016. We can't afford 
run the first two empty and have the second four packed. Um, the airline economics don't work that way, so we need to balance our our passenger loads out. That's the reason that the May flights are going to be cheaper than October and Christmas, to try to encourage maybe fewer of the people that are up here thinking, I really want to go at Christmas, to think, you know, actually, maybe I'll save some money and I'll go on the first flight so we bring our Christmas demand down a little bit and bring our May demand up so we end up with a more balanced um, way of, uh, of, of managing our loads through the year. So, for sure, we're going to be able to offer Christmas flights. Um, hopefully, I'm going to be on board at least one of them. Uh, I know it's going to be a really exciting time, but uh, we really want to make sure that as many people as possible use the services here. So I would emphasise, um, don't wait till Christmas, think about joining us in May. Excellent. Okay. Thanks, Richard. I really appreciate you coming. Uh, like I said earlier, it so happened that me and Richard are in the same city today, and I thought this was a great idea to give a little bit of a more overview of Atlantic Star and how we're going to fly long haul to St. Helena. As you know, the Comia uh, out of South Africa is not for everyone. I mean, it's great for connecting. I'm not sure how it fits you from a personal perspective. We're going to look at rebroadcasting this directly on our website um, once we've edited out all the uh, little issues we've had. But yeah, we'll keep the it, fire alarm. The fire instance. alarm, for instance. We'll keep it up here on the Facebook page. And if you want to know more, follow us on Facebook. We'll try and deliver as much information as we can. Follow uh, Richard uh, Atlantic Star Airlines on uh, on his Facebook page. We are both connected, so he'll be seeing what's been posted on mine and also on his. So, Richard, is there anything else you've got to say before we close this today? And thank you ever so much for coming over and uh, helping. Uh, all, all I would say is uh, thank you um, to all of you who've uh, emailed in with questions and come up with questions through the day. I've, I've never done this before, but it's, I think it's a great way to communicate. Um, Atlantic Star really wants to be your airline. Uh, we put in a tremendous amount of hard work into um, getting the contracts together, getting the concept together, uh, and these flights are going to happen. I, I'm going to be on the first one, uh, and I hope as many of you as possible are going to join us. But it's really down to you now as Saints, as a community, to decide um, if, you, if you want to back Atlantic Star, if you want to have a London service, you need to back us, uh, and you need to get on board uh, buy a ticket, talk to your friends about what a great service it is that we're offering um, and make sure that we can prosper as a business going forward so that we can do things like sponsoring the guides, so that we can do things like bringing families together, so that we can do things like offering discounts, so that we can do things like um, offering better child fares than the competition. Um, but we need, we need you to back us now. So um, we've done all the hard work. All you've got to do is go to the website and book a ticket or get yourself down to, down to Solomon's in Jamestown. Uh, I really hope that you do. And I'm looking forward to, uh, to finding you all soon. Excellent. Good. Thank you, Richard. Really appreciate it. And hopefully next time we meet, we can talk about it at Touchdown in St. Helena. Sounds good. Sounds very good. Thanks, everybody. Um, um, thanks for your time today. Thank you.